Welcome back to the Futurist New Deal Podcast. Um, and uh, we are here uh, with my friend, uh, Osinikachi Kalu, uh, a, 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 a futurist, a organizer, and writer, um, an expert on the subject of fearism. And uh, we are here to discuss uh, the Wuhan coronavirus, uh, uh, fears and concerns of which have quite nearly reached a fever pitch the world around. And, uh, and perhaps this is very well uh, warranted. Um, as of today, uh, the number of deaths on mainland China uh, have uh, reached a 1900 in, in uh, resulting directly from uh, this out, this outbreak and um, uh, this is uh, not not showing signs of subsiding anytime in the next uh, few days and uh, so we would we would uh, uh, like to discuss its potential impact on the African continent uh, we would like to discuss uh, how how people should address this and um, and uh, how, how we should be at reacting. Osinikachi, oh, good morning, sir. Oh, good morning, good morning, my brother. Um, good um, to see you. Thank you, thank you. you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's always it's always a delight, and um, I'm I'm curious uh, to hear your thoughts on um, on the coronavirus and uh, and how and how you think that the the theorist philosophy uh, uh, fits in uh, with this uh, pandemic concern. Okay. Um, um... First of all, I would like to point out a few things. It's not about the emergence of a virus. A virus shouldn't be restricted or called um, Hawaii or wherever, coronavirus or all that. So when, um, or let's say you are in all that. Um, so when a virus emerges like this, it becomes um, a human problem because it's targeted on what life so there's nothing to say this is this virus is a chinese virus or it is a, an indian virus or that because when it begins to when it begins to spread it affects the totality of what humanity is doing it goes it goes across all the sectors economic and um, other um, government sectors and all that there's a kind of restriction and the human person trying to be careful thereby creating a kind of fear-based society and so the most important thing is to look at how these virus tend to condition the, the psychic of the human person so there's a kind of a behavioral pattern that we come into place you see, everyone trying to be careful by avoidance theory, avoidance principles, and all that, because no one wants to lose their life. So you mm -hmm. see. But then, uh, how are we to, the problem now is how are we going to control this, uh, um, the, this spread of fear, you know? I think it is also important that we realize the place, the role of fear in this whole thing. For instance, when the media spread it as such, it uh, motivates medical experts, mm. health experts, to go into serious investigation on trying to see a way of solving this problem that have be, that have uh, befallen man. So it is no longer a Chinese problem. Like I said, it's now a universal problem because of how the world is connected. So mm. the, you can't say that it will remain there. Not even the restriction, not even the restriction will stop that because we've seen that it's somewhat of airborne. So when you look at, when, when you look at the interpretation of what or how it is, because it is just like, it is in the same category with the, um, Last of fever. So mm. when you talk about, they are in the same category. So now, the the most important thing is to face. We've we've gotten we've known the danger of contracting the disease, but the idea of um, you know, to create a kind of a fear culture, increasing the fear matrix, is so people. The, the tension is more like my friend Dr. Sarita Shama, the editor in chief of TFDS magazine. She was invited to Nepal for a talk. 
It was last month, but she declined because of what? The coronavirus. Mm. I told her she should go. That's what happened to her. She said, no. But then the husband said, no, she shouldn't. Now you look at it, the restriction. And it's affecting everything that humanity is doing. Okay, look at the, the highest um, distant uh, mobile con um, conference. The one, the, the, the one that, um, that was just canceled in Barcelona, Spain. And because of what the fear of coronavirus, same thing, most of our um, keynote speakers for the TFDS conference this year declined because of what the coronavirus. So they are scared just because they get talked about the danger of what losing thousands of persons if if coronavirus enters Africa. But it was so. It was so. The the, the statistics he gave was so much as if Africans cannot handle some situation themselves. So he just said, people, you know, just one discovering Egypt, mm -hmm. then it was a, a kind of a, it was some sort of a, a history generalization of, a, of facts. So you don't make it just as, at the beginning, in, during our chat, you were just like saying, um, is there any experience in your site? Is there any experience uh, in the other part of Africa? I said, no. We've not experienced it. So we, we, we have a license that we're battling with, but not coronavirus. So now when you look at the way they are just mag uh, magnifying the whole thing, you see it, they're blowing it out of proportion, especially the media. So most media are using it to create fear and tension, a kind of using this, uh, th this as a sales suit. So when you just type something, coronavirus and all that, you, you make sales. I see people using it creating fear culture. they don't even understand how they are um um depressing people and how they are trying to condition that the people don't care about the psychic conditioning the, the patterns of people in the world it's very mm -hmm. important it's very necessary that we put this into consideration why is the coronavirus bad but the way we carry it out in the media is very important we should be sure of what we say and how we say it we should mm -hmm. make sure that we, we follow the correct statistics of what is happening and mm -hmm. give a good account. Mm -hmm. So not just yes. saying that five, five, 50,000 people will die if it's coming to Africa and all that. We know. So just people need to be careful. People need to follow the scientific instruction that is given because they are the ones to tell us how it is moving. So health practitioners should also come in and help. Mm -hmm. So advising us, giving us updates, I'm not blowing out of proportion. Mm. So, and you, and and you mentioned that um, that there is only one country on the African continent that uh, has had any outbreak or any incidents at all of the Wuhan uh, coronavirus, which has also uh, been uh, renamed by the World Health Organization COVID nineteen, also known by this designation. And that is in Egypt. There's one one person um, on on all of the uh, African continent. Uh, uh, known to be, and that was reported uh, toward the end of the last uh, week by uh, uh, the Al Jazeera network and and others. And um, um, you know, it, it's interesting. It's interesting to me. Uh, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, the impact of of these uh, th this uh, pandemic of fear, and it is described. Uh, the World Health Organization has said that um, uh, there is an an infodemic in the form of misinformation about uh, COVID nineteen about Wuhan. And uh, it said, it said uh, uh, representatives from the WHO have said that false information about these uh, set of incidents is spreading faster than the virus itself. And in many cases, it's not merely making people uh, uncomfortable in the ways uh, that you described, uh, but it's also uh, fomenting uh, uh, thinly veiled racist tropes, uh, people uh, making all sorts of judgments about the food uh, that Chinese people be eating uh, being the source of something uh, like this. Uh, for example, you, most people are probably familiar uh, with uh, internet memes and uh, discussions that describe uh, the consumption of bats, uh, these uh, mammals, or uh, other other uh, unusual eating habits as being the source of this sort of thing. This is uh, uh, this is not uh, based in fact. Uh, these are um, uh, uh, these are strange manifestations of the very fears uh, that uh, that you have uh, so so eloquently described. Um, <clears throat> I want to I want to ask you. 
Um, so uh, um, in, in recent days, uh, the death toll, the official death toll has pushed up uh, to nearly 2,000 in this uh, set of COVID-19 uh, incidents of recent weeks. In, uh, in, uh, from 2014 to 2016, um, in, in West Africa, there was uh, a, a horrific Ebola outbreak um, uh, leading to uh, officially uh, 12,000 deaths in uh, West Africa, attending to be in Guinea, uh, Liberia, Sierra Leone. Uh, but here in North America, uh, where, there were, uh, where there was an almost negligible loss of life as a result of this, there was a tremendous amount of fear. Uh, do you see any parallels between the mechanics of fear mongering over the Ebola outbreak in the rest of the world and, uh, para and uh, the outbreak of the Wuhan coronavirus? Um, uh, wh what, else, what else can we do to assure people uh, that, uh, that they're going to be okay? Well, when a thing is targeted to life, like I want to make a point now, you know, if people tend not to understand that the forced spread of uh, a virus kills more than what the virus itself. Mm -hmm. So when you give false information about the virus, for instance, you see someone, anyone who contracts HIV, for instance, dies before his or her time because of the fear of the death itself. So you see the one dying. If you don't give the person compassion, love, and care, if, you, if there's how you love someone and give the person encouragement, the person might even stay longer than um, what's than, uh, expected. So the, the case here is how people blow these things out of proportion. Okay, I have a practical example. When this uh, Ebola virus started, I was uh, thinking that 2014, I was mm -hmm. at um, I was at the MBC in Nemo mm -hmm. State. As I even be say, they must take so it affected that both of our religion worship. So they changed, there was this change that the, um, this case of peace in the Catholic Church was cut short because of what the, the Ebola virus. Why some priests resisted, some said, Oh, we should forget. Even the reception of communion, they said, Okay, people should be what receiving with the power from the power. So th 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 there's this change of it affected everything, both religious practice and all uh, cultural um, patterns. So now, in that uh, MBC, now to be precise, um, we we there was this news that a man who contracted Ebola returned from Lagos. So people started fleeing from MBC. Mm. People started running out from up the town. So just that they said they, because the 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 brother who is a medical doctor said he should go home and die. So it was a false news. We let her realize the person is still living with. We let her realize that he was just having what a running stomach. He was just having high fever, and uh, there was this presupposition that he. So you see, most people were quarantined forcibly. So you see, you are not having Ebola, and they are quarantining you with someone having Ebola, presupposing that you have Ebola. So the calculation was to the force. You, you saw, okay, when um, good luck. The British Jonathan, the former president of Nigeria, tend to handle this the, the whole issue. You saw how they eradicated it in Nigeria. And so the truth is this Ebola truly came, but the information were forcefully managed. But there are some things that we need to put into uh, consideration. You see, the people, people, um, people can produce uh, disease through CRISPR means you and I know that. Mm -hmm. So and we these uh, these um these uh these uh, uh this uh, disease going on now we don't even know its roots. No one tends to know specifically how it emerged. So the whole world, including your you, we are still confused. How it came to be there's this presupposition that it, because of what they eat, grow food and all that, or healthy food and all that. But we don't know. There could be something behind it that the world don't even know. You know, you can buy these and all that and produce disease. And this is a kind of a touristic approach that the world is going to have said to myself, are we evolving or devolving? 
so now when you talk about the the the, the parallel line between Ebola and um, and um, um, this coronavirus, you see, you, you can't place it side by side because um, Ebola started where it was said to have um, the, the the recent outbreak started in Africa. So, but this one now, this coronavirus, uh, we, we are saying that it started from where China. Now look at the population there, population of China, and the way they migrate, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And there is this fear because you see them, they are, they are they are doing extremely well. So they're everywhere, technologically and otherwise. So people are scared because they need the world need their service. So the world need their service. We can't claim that uh, they are not important to us. Each human is very important to the other. So we can't draw where they are and our relationship. So the most important thing is this, that the world should control, we should really pay attention to scientific instructions and uh, leave some sort of analysis that is not coherent, that people, you, are not, you, don't, you don't have a scientific data consigning this and you are blowing it out of proportion. Look at it now, for instance, if you see, if you just announced that there is a possibility, they said that there's no categorical statement that coronavirus could enter Nigeria, for instance. You see, the, the, the people, it will affect so many institutions and most businesses will shut down. So that is what is happening now. A whole lot of things, um, international, international airports and all that, they have been affected as a result of this issue. So we just need to pay attention and uh, be careful of the information that we receive. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, for instance, uh, two weeks ago, there was this uh, media outlet that carried um, out forced news saying that some Chinese, some group of persons in China, that they, they, uh, they filed a case um, for, those, um, um, for those who have contracted the 20,000 persons that have contracted this, uh, uh, this coronavirus to be killed. So it was forced. So there was this pressure. So people were like investigating the source and this media outlet been um, um, categorized and known for carrying out uh, false news. So such media should be clamped down. So we should know what and how we say things because the human, the human brain is structured in such a way that it receives what false news more than good ones. False news spreads quickly mm, mm. because yes. of fear. So yes, sir. And, and also this uh, this uh, uh, this big news and uh, and this fear mongering and misinformation around this virus. It's it's been noted by the World Health Organization and other bodies of this kind uh, that this uh, that this misinformation will not only affect people uh, psychologically but also affect the efficacy of treatments. Uh, if people are uh, reacting uh, incorrectly uh, to a situation, uh, that makes it harder to address uh, that situation. And uh, that, is, that is unfortunate. Uh, that is reason enough in my mind uh, to uh, avoid uh, uh, too much of this uh, fear-based uh, thinking around uh, outbreaks of this kind. Now, you mentioned, um, uh, you mentioned the Chinese diaspora in the, the context of how, uh, this, uh, how this epidemic is different. Uh, from other, other epidemics, I think that's an astute, astute observation. Um, the uh, it's it's estimated that there are between fifty thousand and a hundred thousand uh, Chinese uh, uh, Chinese Nigerians. Um, uh, do you think that uh, uh, this outbreak has affected uh, Sino-Nigerian uh, relations at all? Uh, do you think that um, uh, there's any reason for concern about things of this kind? You know, they they just went for their they traveled for their. Um... Um, for a feast, their own celebration, what as we, we, we Christians do our own Christmas. They just traveled for theirs. So there's this, um, there is this uh, share of voice recording and all that, that people shouldn't allow Chinese to come into Nigeria because most of them have contracted this disease and they're sharing it on, through WhatsApp and all that. People are saying some someone just recorded. They say is recording from China that uh, a lot of them have contracted this disease and all that. So when you look at it this way, you say, why, why, why are we doing this? 
And so there, there, there's this relationship, Chinese-Nigeria relationship, but but then you don't blow it because where if this sickness now, this coronavirus now, as that is announced to have been seen, um, reported that uh, announced that there is a case in Egypt, and uh, I travel to the United States and you say you are coming from um, Africa, you've contracted coronavirus. And you see this avoidance way of speaking that you, you, when you want to greet your friend that you know, instead of avoiding you. So that's just that. So you, you, you people should um, know how to spread information. So when you talk about the fear mongering, I will just smile because we are living in, in a world that a little thing, they use it as a sales tool. They use it to create tension. They use it to increase the fear matrix. So the fear matrix, you talk about how people were fearful of this coronavirus, it's increasing exponentially every day. So it's increasing the statistics. When you look at the, the fear state of people, you see how it grows. When you look at it on charts, you see how the fear matrix is increasing. So it's all about when you spread this information, they say, oh, no Chinese, and you see most of them. They are not allowed. Is that there is this pressure on the government? Please don't allow them to come in. Please don't allow them to come in. Please don't allow them to come in. So it's a kind of um, understanding. They can easily do what say. Okay, you show us your health. What show us your health uh, uh, status? But I was opportune to um, quickly look, um, check out few things online. I saw this one, someone shared that a Chinese man coming out and um, spitting on a, 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 on a wall and rubbing it. So someone saying, this is how they spread the coronavirus, that this one is doing it intentionally. So you look at it this way, like, oh, but that may not be the intention. The a color of presupposition of this um, virus, people are just spreading false news and create intention in the mind of, of everybody. So, but if you understand, if you have been hygienic, if you have been knowing how to uh, handle yourself and manage yourself in the crowd, you won't, you won't panic at all. They have given us say that, okay, it doesn't uh, survive in a hot environment, temperature of so, so, so degree, and you need to be careful you don't rub your face and all that. So when you cough or you do that, when you touch the surface of anyone, well, so we just follow instruction. There's no two ways about that. Follow instruction and be careful. So it's not about blowing, blowing it out of proportion. Yes, yes. and um, we've we've seen we mentioned uh, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, the uh, we we spoke of the uh, Ebola virus. So we spoke of the loss of fever, a uh, different, uh, a little bit different uh, kind of epidemiology uh, in those uh, obviously, and a different uh, a set of concerns besides that we uh, discussed. Uh, there have been other outbreaks of other coronaviruses um, uh, distinct from COVID-19, uh, like the Middle East uh, Respiratory Syndrome in 2012. Uh, that claimed about 900 lives and infected uh, about 3,000 uh, people, uh, fewer uh, than, uh, than, uh, the, uh, than uh, COVID-19 to date. Um, do you think that in one year's time, uh, we will still be talking about uh, this incident? Or do you think that this is um, uh, uh, something that is a media a largely a media sensation that will soon uh, subside in the way that uh, in the way that hysterical fears in North America about Ebola uh, quickly subsided um, and seemed also to follow a certain kind of a political trajectory coinciding with the election season, uh, for example. <laughs> yes, you know, some of all these things, when I look at it, I smile just as um, mm. it, it happens. Some of all these things, they are strategic way of uh, seeking attention and all that, a strategic way of seeking attention. For instance, if I am saying that I'm superior than you, and there is a kind of uh, virus that's, that is, that is um, challenging your society, after some times, I could possibly need your help to assist. By doing so, I say, oh, well, if I didn't come to your aid, you would have. So, so when, when you look at the media, I, I, I don't even listen to the way they blow things out of proportion. The most important thing is to look at what is pragmatically, what is, what is laid before. So now, you know, when you talk about the media, 
um, when, when you talk about uh, how it will last, we look at what the urgency and the reaction of health practitioners towards this. I think currently there is an app that that is used to dictate one that have contracted a, a coronavirus. So there's a whole lot of invention, investigation, crowdfunding to tackle the situation because no one is safe when it comes to your country. You're not safe because you don't know we are what we, we are homo and socialist social being because we must interact. We must touch somewhere. We must touch surface. So it's all about as the urgency is. We look at how the scientists react towards it, how they work towards it, how they investigate the case, how they care. So it is possible before, before it's possible that uh, before tomorrow or next, we'll, uh, scientists will come out and say they've discovered the cure mm -hmm. for coronavirus. So it's not about scientists working, encouraging them, motivating them. That's why societies should invest on technology, healthcare, Mm. And all that. So, because health is well, if there is so no this thing, um, let's say funding on health, you see there will be problem. So there should be reserve um, for unforeseen circumstances because you don't know which virus could come up next. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, uh, we've discussed this in the context of a uh, more broad context of fearism. Uh, that uh, this kind of thinking it does distill uh, human efforts um, in some cases, as you've uh, as you've described here. Uh, now, uh, Bill Gates has said uh, just a few days ago uh, that um, that uh, the uh, death toll from COVID nineteen could reach ten million if the virus were to spread uh, to Africa. Uh, however, also um, the World Health Organization and others are reporting that just in the last uh, few days, the the uh, spread has subsided. Uh, so that it's now uh, uh, growing at a slower pace than it has been since uh, uh, since the time that it was uh, first brought to our attention uh, in January um, for uh, uh, became this media sensation. That is, uh, what is your feeling? Are are we uh, have we turned a corner? Uh, do you think that uh, the uh, the kinds of uh, research and development that you described, uh, attempting to quickly uh, target and find uh, solutions to this problem, uh, have a role to play in that? Uh, do, or do you th uh, do you think that the worst is over? Uh, with the Wuhan coronavirus. It's quite unfortunate that Big Gate could make such a categorical statement that mm -hmm. is unscientific. So, <laughs> and so we're, 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 when um, Ebola started in Africa, it was a Congolese doctor that, uh, that discovered the cure for Ebola virus. So mm -hmm. it wasn't um, the white man or the, or, or the U.S. guy. So you don't make people to feel that they are inferior. I know you uh, be get celebrated uh, uh, Melinda Bill and Melinda Gate Foundation being 20 years in Africa. But then mm. it, that doesn't give you a, I think it, it could be um, it could be suffering from what um, fallacy of composition. So you just use a, a, a little experience to totalize. In mm -hmm. African philosophy, we can say that it's only Africans that can say what is happening in Africa because we, we understand our ontology, we understand written about us, and we know what, what happens in and out of, in and out of Africa. So when you look at these things, you say, okay, 50 or 10,000 or 50,000 or a million of people will die or that. It may not be true. I bet you coronavirus, if you enter Africa, you can survive up to a month. Mm. And so we look at the history, go back to history, you see how wonderful the Egyptian priests were. So just, um, we, we, we have a natural, a natural way of curing some of all these things. So it's just about the pressure and all that. When you blow, when, 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 when they start raising these uh, uh, clarion calls, saying it is uh, well, five million or all that, it's blowing out of proportion. So we should mm -hmm. listen to the, the, the World Health Organization. Africans, we are suffering for different things. We are still struggling to, to fix things. Uh, coronavirus diseases, they are not our problems. So mm -hmm. we have other things that we are facing in Africa. So let's just mm -hmm. look at the way of curbing these uh, 
this uh, uh, mongering of uh, fear mongering of this uh, virus and all that. So Bill Gates, uh, just uh, I choose to discard what is he was saying, what he said. Yes, yes, I think I think that's wise, and I think that it's wise uh, to repeat uh, that people have a simplistic and um, and completely wrongheaded ideas about other parts of the world, and uh, and uh, no no place and is there more uh, misinformation uh, of this kind in North America than of the African continent, Americans. For example, I don't recognize uh, that Lagos is a large, bustling city, uh, the largest on the continent, um, and uh, has many wonderful things as, as, as that you would expect of a city that size. Americans uh, are, uh, and and many people don't realize it. Just in the last 15 years, uh, Nigeria's GDP has 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 grown fivefold, um, and um, a commensurate uh, developments um, and and and, uh, and uh, business incubation uh, to go along with that. And these are. Uh, uh, so people, uh, people that have uh, these uh, simplistic and uh, and ill-informed uh, narratives in their minds, as you as you alluded to, and I think uh, we owe it to ourselves in talking even of things like this uh, to attempt uh, to to combat that. Um, <clears throat> uh, with it of uh, in, in, in bringing our bringing our talk uh, to uh, con to uh, to an end, uh, what what role do you think that fearism? And um, uh, can can play in managing problems of this kind, and um, and are there any other benefits or roles that fear itself has to play in in complex dynamics like this? In your view, sure. Um, you know, in fearism, we say that fear is not a, a negative emotion. We see fear as both a positive and negative emotion. Mm -hmm. So it's just like that, and we talked about it as the, the receiver, that is the subject, the the, the subject person. So, so we have object of fears, um, which we characterize as also fear factors. So now, how we receive this, and if we receive um, this uh, coronavirus positively, by not, what I mean by positively is not, by not um, fleeing from or being so fearful of it, but by receiving it and walking towards it and facing the, the coronavirus squarely, uh, by going into researches, investigating, and uh, working towards eradicating it uh, quickly, it will be a very good way of doing what utilizing our fears. Now, but if the media use use it as a um, as a sales tool, it becomes what a problem, the kind of uh, mongering or trying to blow it out of proportion. Because it, when when they blow it out of proportion how people receive even treatment becomes what difficult why no one first will allow him or herself to be quarantined so now no one would like him or herself to be that what a patient of what coronavirus so these are the things that people need to understand if there is an investigation when you carry them out you you manage them intelligently you manage them intelligently because there are some persons that uh, there are some persons that don't know how to receive information or handle pressure. Now, the way you re receive information is totally different from the way I receive this because of our the, the different thought patterns that we have and our worldview. So our exposure is different too. So now you look at it this way: fear, fear has a, a very big role to play in a situation like this. How? Because it motivates people to go into research, investigation, and thereby producing drugs um, and the uh, fluids that will help in uh, eradicating coronavirus. You know, I'd like to uh, uh, also uh, uh, mention uh, the good work uh, that you are doing uh, with the TAPS organization and the TAPS International Conference. And I know uh, that uh, you, you mentioned the Barcelona World uh, uh, Mobile World Congress uh, being canceled uh, because of uh, concerns about COVID-19. And, um, and uh, I, I understand there have been some uh, uh, similar difficulties uh, because of uh, uh, international flights uh, becoming a little more complicated in, in the wake of, of the Wuhan concerns. Uh, so I hope uh, that this will pass quickly and I know that in any event, 
uh, this conference and your efforts uh, will continue to succeed. Um, and I thank you, sir, for uh, the fine work uh, that you do. It's always a pleasure uh, to see you and speak with you, uh, 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 Mr. Kalu. And let's do this again sometime soon. Okay, but the, the conference we still hold our conference. We are going, we want to make it an online conference where people can subscribe and attend wherever they are. And uh, I think it will be a good one. In every mm -hmm. regard, there is always an opportunity. And uh, we, we can't just uh, deny people of uh, the benefits of this conference. Uh, mm -hmm. We need to find a way of doing it so that people can attend from their home and office and all that to be part of uh, this uh, inform information. Like, I think you'll be speaking uh, during the conference too. So yes, sir. We, we, need to, we need to look out for a way so as to do this uh, conference. So yes. thank you for having me. Thank yes, you. and that is it's a pleasure. And that is the tra Transdisciplinary Agora for Future Discussions, an incredible organization. And uh, you can go to uh, taffds.org, that's tafs.org, and you can learn more about this fine organization about uh, uh, Mr. Kalu's good work and about these upcoming events uh, that we've described. Uh, so check it out. If you've enjoyed this show and would like to see more, please like and subscribe. And also check out benzion2020.com for updates on the campaign and to go to transhumanist-party.org and sign up.